Ready? Good evening, everybody. This is Chris Ronquillo, along with my partner in crime here, Tom Odoms, the Anaconda. And uh, this is actually our 14th episode, but the first edition of Hammer Fist podcast here on MMA Fight Pass. So we're going to begin the day. We're going to give some shout outs to those people that uh, give us a lot of courtesy and help out as far as, as, far as Bellator MMA, Combat This America, Klepler Digital Media. Uh, fights coming up this weekend. 559 Fights returns to Visalia. Also UFC 225 in Chicago, Illinois. And a couple of new pro leagues are going to be starting. One, I believe, tomorrow, the 7th, and the other one in July 20th. And as the hour goes on, we'll talk a little bit more about them. So how you doing, bud? I've been doing well. How you been, man? Good, 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 man. Good. Ready to ready to rumble. We have uh, an in-house guest actually uh, set back a little bit. He's going to call in U, uh, Uni Valencia. He'll be calling in about the 7 o'clock hour. And I also have uh, pro fighter... Cody's son's going to be calling him from Bakersfield. He'll be fighting the upcoming uh, fight in uh, Bakersfield in on uh, June fifteenth. So we're looking forward to hearing them and their preparations, and you know a lot from Uni to catching up and uh, everything he's got going on. Before we get started, guys, uh, want to just give a little shout out to Chris Ronquillo and uh, the man behind the scene here, Archie Tober, for giving me this chance at co-hosting. Uh, this is my second time co-hosting this podcast. I'm excited to be here. And we got a lot to talk about. The MMA scene is growing rapidly. And there's some big fights this weekend. What do you, th what do you think about yeah, the UFC Yeah, there's weekend? a lot of stuff. We another spike in, in uh, MMA, which is good, man. I, yes. I know here in California, it's kind of scarce. Uh, over the hill, Southern California, or they, they have more frequently. And here, here we're, we're not like it was, you know, so we're... We're starving for some more attention, some more local MMA, uh, actually combat fighting in a whole. Uh, you know, we have the amateur boxing, we have the amateur MMA, which is awesome and great, but the pro, I mean, you know, through the years, man, and that's that's where you came through. You didn't have the luxury of doing any amateur shows. It was like, yeah. okay, we got this guy, you're gonna take the fight, and uh, but now, with all the amateurs, you know, these guys are staying in a little bit more, refining their skills a little bit more. Yeah, it's and a whole different story yeah, now. It, um, it is. So you got a little polished guys that are coming up after maybe five, six fights, and um, not like it was before. And a lot of these guys, you know, are way, it's, it's a whole different deal, man. It's a whole different deal. Uh, back in the day when we started, there was no amateur series. Uh, basically, you could either fight in Gladiator Challenge up in Porterville at the casino, or you could go out there to Tachi Palace, and if you were lucky enough, you could get a spot in the WEC. Um, this was before the UFC took over. And uh, yeah, you were stepping right into a pro league, and you, you know, us local fighters, we were getting matched up against guys from uh, really talented schools. You know, people, people come all over. A lot of people don't realize how big the Tachi is. Oh, yeah. And what I mean, you can do from Tachi. Yeah. And during that time, um, you know, of course, the economy had a lot to do with it. Um, you know, the budget was a lot better. It's kind of prime. And, and it, to be honest, just my opinion, a lot of guys got spoiled, man. Oh, yeah. A lot of guys got spoiled making a lot of money real quick. I think and, they were uh, making, uh, some of those guys were making bigger bucks than guys going into UFC today are making yeah, as, a, exactly. as starting. Um, you know, one thing that's cool in this area is we got Jeremy Luchow and these guys you know, putting on the 559 fights. And man, it's, it's really given a platform for these fighters to go out there and test their skill. And like, a lot, a lot of people can look at MMA and go, hey, I wanna try that and I wanna jump in there. I've, I've seen it happen with several different people, but only certain people can get in there and do it. And uh, these guys are allowing these guys to get out there and try it. And some of them are doing really well. And now we got this new thing going that taught you with the pro contract that you can win. Talk a little bit yeah, about pro that. Yeah, prospect series. And from what I'm um, understanding too, uh, Camo along with CSAC, which we're all familiar, are the sanctioning bodies that you know overlook the safety of the fighters and rules, what whatnot. I know that uh, in the early stages of the amateur MMA, um, fighters you know, training in their garage, and there's still some now that do, but 
um, it's my understanding this last year they kind of passed a rule that they want them from basically like a certified gym and usually like a certified so what's going to make a, a gym certified um, I have no it probably more money, pay, more money paying your dues some type of licensing or but something. what I'm thinking or actually what I was told is you know when you transition from an amateur to a pro they do you know basically like a test their ability to say that you know that yeah. you qualify but it's my understanding that they're supposed to be starting up for amateurs as well too it's not a bad idea yeah um, when I had my gym going we had a, we had the uh, commission come in and they put the fighters through a pretty strenuous test they want to make sure that they're not going to go out there and have a heart attack yeah you know, it's they, all about safety it's know? about safety it is it's a good thing it's a good thing um, with all these schools around here now like there's no excuse not to train hard back in the day we had to travel around and train in the garage and get together with guys on the weekends now there is uh, you know we got elite martial arts in Visalia we got Vitruvian with Mark De La Cruz I mean every town around here has a good jiu-jitsu school and there's good striking there's really no excuse um, our guest tonight his situation's a little different he comes out of a little school in Farmersville called Team KO uh, it's kind of like a hole in the wall. It's not not a lot of people know yeah, about it. It is, and I mean, it, Team KO. You know, I haven't had a chance to be out there for a while, but um, I know in the early days, you know, actually, yeah, they did start in the in the in the backyard. In the backyard. But what these guys do, they're based out of Farmersville, California, but these guys are basically uh, involved in the city. They give a lot to the city. But these guys don't ask for anything, you know. They they develop programs for kids that aren't fortunate. They open up the doors, the opportunities for them to actually be involved in some kind of discipline versus being out in the streets and stuff like that. And they've had success in the past. They brought a lot of well. belts home. They you do know? very well. <laughs> and um, considering, so it really, you know, yeah, it helps to have the luxury of a, a gym if that's what you're into. But for what they have, um, hell, it is I mean, they're showing results, but they put in the work, too. Yeah, like uh, when I shut my school down, I had chances to train with the, uh, and I did. I was getting phone calls to, you know, hey, come and, you know, you're welcome to teach here and do this and that. And I went around to several schools, you know what I mean, trying to, to fit the glove. And uh, Team KO, Danny and Johnny Valadinos, that's his last name, I believe. Yes, sir. Like he just said. These guys, they don't ask anything in return. You know what I mean? I went out there and uh, I kind of caught a lot of flack when I first went out there to help these guys and train. People get the wrong perspective of them when they look at the group. And I was hearing all kinds of things, you know, like they're thugs and gangsters and this and that. And I don't judge a person until I can go exactly. in there and Exactly, and them, that's you know the way it I mean? should be like that. And uh, when I went in there, Danny and Johnny both opened their doors to me to come in and help. And all the guys there, you know, they're really respectful. They're hard workers. They don't have the benefits of these great gyms with black belt instructors every day there. They just go in there and grind. And uh, Uni Valencia is a product of that gym. We've seen a lot of guys come out of there. Uni just fought for the pro contract, right? Yeah, he now just you got, were out there, right? Yeah, he just got a, a pro contract. He was actually, uh, I think, a 145, 559 fights champ. He went up and actually fought uh, Avalos for the 55, but you know, he, he came out a little low and, and didn't walk out with a win, but, they both were invited to fight at Tachi, and uh, both received a prospect. Uh, actually Chris a contract. Avalos? Um, Jose, I believe. Jose Avalos? Yes. At, older, yeah, Avalos is a yeah, stud. He, yeah, he's but, also a 5 I'm, Did he win a contract yeah, as well? Yeah, he did too. Both Good. he and Yeah, he, he deserves it. I've seen one. him fight. He's, so I'm looking forward for those guys, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. You it's know, cool. those guys are good guys, and they know um, they got to, you know, change change the regimen a little bit because some, some things are going to change for them as far as uh, – some of the tactics they'll be able to use. Uh, yeah, in we've seen too. it happen. Um, we've seen guys go through this amateur deal. We got a couple minutes there. Um, you know, we've seen the guys go through the amateur deal. They do really well. Then they hop into that pro league. It's a it's a huge step. The the game is different. You got camps coming from all over out there to touch you. Uh, you got Nick uh, Nick Diaz boys. You know they're yeah. coming out there. You got Uriah Faber's team. He's got guys fighting out there. People know that you can get into the UFC from there. So. Yeah, the, the training has to be stepped up. Everything has to change for these guys. All right, we're going to take a break, pay the first bill. We're here live at Spike and Rail in Selma, California, which is playing host to our podcast, and uh, we'll be right back.
Go ahead if you want. All right, we're back live, guys. MMA Fight Pass, Hammer, Fit, Hammer Fist Podcast. Um, this is what, the 14th episode? 14th episode? My second episode. Uh, <laughs> this I'm not having been on camera too many times, and uh, I went back after the last one. I was kind of watching it. And I, uh, what was that movie with Will Ferrell? He's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> It's yeah, just habit, I mean, like, man. I do that too. I do that too. <laughs> what do you do with these things? You know what I mean? Yeah. But nah. Um, hey, this weekend we got some real good fights coming up. What, five five nine fights of, returns, man. Five five I mean, nine fights on the amateur scene. Five five nine fights. We got big Albert Gonzalez takes on uh, what is it? Ryan Newman, I believe, uh, for the one eighty five strap. And I tried to get Big Al, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. Hopefully we can get him in the future. You know. The guy is, is a pretty solid guy. And uh, actually, everybody, that uh, promotion produces a lot of quality fighters. It's been good. It's been really good. Um, I know what's on my mind is the Yoel Romero fight with Whitaker. Oh, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be. <laughs> what do you think about I, that I, fight? I, I don't know. Whitaker's coming off an injury. And, well, Romero... You don't know, man. That guy, he could just throw a bomb and it's done that quick. Yeah, I watched that fight again today, and uh, Whitaker, it looked like he hurt himself in the in the beginning of that fir the first fight. Yeah. It looked like I he think, hurt his I leg. I'm it, not sure what he I did. Think he, uh, did. he definitely hurt his leg, but man, uh, he still went out there and pulled off a, a win. You know what I mean? He adjusted in between the rounds, and uh, Yoel is no joke, man. He's no joke. He's impressive for me to watch. And uh, did you get a chance to hear Rome? Romero when he was on the Rogan podcast? No, Did you no, to I that? didn't. Uh -uh. Yeah, it was really, really interesting, man, just to get the aspects of, you know, him from where he comes from and the training and what he's been through. And uh, it gave me a whole lot more respect for the guy. But, yeah, that's going to be a good fight. And then what else do we got? There's another really – oh, Colby Covington and Rafael yeah. Desanos. <laughs> yeah, I wanna, yeah that, I think I'm looking forward to that one, actually. That, yeah. That one, right? Covington, I mean, he's lighting up Twitter and – He's calling lit, everybody yeah. out and, and all He's that stuff. He's definitely sparked too, up so. a little uh, the Brazilian controversy. Man. Yeah, a little Brazilian controversy. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, I'm looking forward for that fight. What that do you think fight. about that? Who do you got? What are your picks on those fights? Man, it's a pick 'em. I, I, I got to go with Dos Anjos, man. Yeah, I'm going with Dos Anjos. Uh, after too. his last few fights, he's just. You know, at the heavier weight, he's a beast, man. He's he was anyway, but now he, he looks fights really, more comfortable. He looks really good at 170. Yeah. yeah, I like the idea of these guys not cutting weight and just going in there and being able to fight with everything that they got in there. And uh, another thing I heard today was that they were getting ready that getting rid of the early weight to move it back to where it was. They're going to move it back. And uh, what, yeah, guys, what's your take on that, man? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're going to miss weight, they're going to miss weight. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. It, um, a lot of fighters really liked it, and the and the fighters that are responsible, and the ones that are real professionals, they will make that weight. Like if you're a professional in MMA, and you're in the UFC, and you can miss eight pounds, like one of the recent yeah. fights, like you just didn't try at all, and it, it it like it really is a form of cheating because you know the other guy is not going to turn the fight down when you go in there. Oh yeah. And uh, you know there's always going to be cheaters that will take it, or even if they're not cheaters, they'll take advantage of any little thing they can get like if you're a fighter and you got to cut a lot of weight try to get you're the edge. yeah you're gonna take advantage of anything you can get and i don't think it's fair that for the couple people that that can't do it you know what i mean they can't pull together yeah i just think that they need to figure something else out you know what I mean? you know how many weigh-ins i've been to so many weigh-ins and way before they even did this 10 o'clock deal but when it got to that witching hour, they were saying, can't we weigh in now, man? We're dying here. Yeah. So, you know, and that was Literally the whole reason dying. why they pushed it up. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen it all. Hey, if, like, people don't know unless you've been around it, like, some of these guys, what some of these guys go through to cut weight, like, they're literally walking onto that skill nearly dead. I've, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. guys go up there and look like a skeleton. And that was the whole reason why for health reasons and uh, dehydration. I mean, yeah, you might cut that weight and make it, that. but it takes more than 48 hours to get your mentality back. And then the next day, 24 hours, you got to fight. I think that's brutal, man. It is brutal. It is brutal. And what do they do in the amateurs? They weigh in the same day, right? Weigh in the same day, yeah. And then they fight that night. So you really got to be on your game with that. Yeah, same thing in, really and, in amateur boxings like that, too. They do the same thing. They weigh in the same day. Mm -hmm. What about same. a professional boxing? Do they weigh in the no, day before? No, the day before, yeah. The day before? Day before yeah. 
night before. Nice, man. And then, um, you know, there's just a lot of, it's all for the safety of, of the athletes, man. And, and I don't under, understand why these guys can't take advantage of a, I mean, you're only as good as the tools you have to work with. And if, as a sport athlete, you're your tool. You know, if you're going to deplete your health, you're not going to last very long, especially of all the investment of training, you know, food, whatever, the expense of traveling to different gyms. I, I don't I don't understand why these guys, and it's not like they don't have the money for nutrition. And there's a lot of guys that would sponsor just to have their name associated with whatever, A, B, fight or whatever. Say, hey, I was the guy, I planned his meal program, I worked on his diet, he made weight. I mean, if I was that type in business, right, right, right. I would, I would courtesy so many fighters just to get my name. What better way to build your business? Like yeah, that? there's a few guys out there that do that, but I, I think that is a business to be, you know, that could, that could definitely yeah. help the sport. You get people in there that know what they're doing, but what it really comes down to is discipline. Exactly. It really, it really comes down to exactly. discipline. So that fight this weekend, we got it's Colby and Rafael, and uh, if you guys don't know, if you didn't see it, <clears throat> who, who was the fight? Was it with Damian Maya after? He did the little trash talk in yeah, Brazil? Yeah, I believe so. So there, after, yeah. I'm sure yeah. a lot of you seen it after Colby, you know, he won in Brazil and he got on the microphone and he said a few things. And uh, if you don't know Brazilian people, they, you know, they are very passionate about their culture and about their people and about their jiu-jitsu and they are really into fighting. And uh, I've been to Brazil myself and I've, I've seen the passion that those people have for that stuff. And boy, to uh, he really sparked it up by doing yeah, that. Yeah, and doing it there. They had to put some kind of like not well bodyguard security at his hotel right after that they also canceled the <laughs> they canceled the fight that was going to be in uh, brazil with with him and rafael yeah which was probably a good thing but yeah uh, he's been talking a lot and i look at rafael when he's training and uh he's the type of type of guy it doesn't look like the trash talk's going to affect him at all when he gets in no, there no 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 he's so focused on on his uh career and where he's going he's got a mission and he wants that 170 strap, man. So you think if he go, if the winner of this fight will take Woodley? I believe so. They should. That'll be good either way. That'll be that'll be pretty good. Well, Colby and him are both. They were teammates, right? Yeah. Colby and Tyrone Woodley. Yeah. Where does Woodley train at now? Uh, I thought he was still um, at. Uh, uh, obviously, it's not AKA, but uh, what's the other one uh, based out of Florida? American uh, top team? I think so. I'm not certain. You can't, you know, quote me on that, but... Uh, Actually, uh, I think he's with Duke Rufus right now. Woodley is. Oh, I think so he, he left the top. Yeah, there. because Colby's with the top team. I think he is with Duke Rufus. Oh, okay. Well, Is shoot, that the main event it. on that card or what? I believe so, yeah. What else we got coming up? Um, Rory McDonald and uh, Gayhard Usasi. Who is Bellator. that? That's going to be good. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I like yeah. what Bellator's been doing. Yeah, they're, they're bringing... You, here's something right here. What do you think about <laughs> Chuck Liddell coming back and fighting? Yeah, we got... You know, there's... I hear everybody talk, and I hear a lot of people, uh, you know, he shouldn't be going back in, and Dana didn't, didn't want him to come. Dana asked him to retire. This is what I think. Chuck Liddell is a smart man. Um... He didn't take, I don't think he took that much damage. But we got a call coming in, guys. All right, hey, Cody, hold on a second, okay? All right, sounds good, man. Thank you, buddy. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to pay some bills here. Shout out, shout out to uh, Klepler Digital Media. And we'll be back here on Hammer Fist Podcast. Welcome back to Hammer Fist Podcast here at the MMA Fight Pass. I got pro MMA fighter from Bakersfield, 
be fighting up in uh, Bakersfield, California on June 15th. Cody Sons, how you doing, bud? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, talk, us, talk to us a little bit about this event that's going to be happening out there. <clears throat> Getting ready for that. Um, I believe there are seven amateur fights and seven professional fights, I believe. So uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting night. Good deal. How's your training going? Good. Uh, Helping weight. Uh, I had a uh, weight that's uh, still on the still on the road to 185. Um, I'm getting that slowly but surely. I'm trying to do it healthy as I can, you know. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, and, that, and that's the main thing. How did you get matched up? You got a, a <laughs> opponent where you, you're not giving the basically everything out to them, you know, give you an opportunity yeah. actually to, to go in there and win, man. Yeah, I'm still undersized, of course. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm always going to be that until I can make like 170. But, uh, yeah, the, the guy I'm fighting, I think his, his record isn't too good. I really don't know it. Uh, I haven't really been trying. I haven't been focusing on my opponent's record or anything like that. I'm training like you know he's the best fighter in the world. There so, you uh, go. I'm, there you go. I'm just. I don't know. I've been. I psyched myself out my last fight because my opponent, you know, he was bigger than me, you know, stronger than me, had a better record than me, and I, I psyched myself out watching film on him, you know, and and I just kind of. I don't know. It was the first time I ever really psyched myself out. So I just. I'm trying a new outlook. I'm not. I'm not even. I didn't even try to look up film on him. Uh, I know he's fought at Tachi twice. Uh, both lost. He lost both times there, though. But um. But yeah, like I said, I'm just. I'm just pushing myself to the limits. I could. I could care less about what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. Just focus on yourself, and uh, you got an idea what task you have, and um, you know I have my cohort right here tom owens what's up cody how you doing bud i'll let him ask you some questions go ahead tom hey cody this is tom owens how you doing man good how about yourself i'm doing well hey where are you training at over there in bakersfield i train at a one h fight team one h fight team awesome who's the coaches out there give a little shout out to your team if you'd like yeah uh gil medina is our striking coach um and art santor is our uh submission grappling and mma coach uh, Art Santori. Art's also fighting uh, uh, the coming event here in Bakersfield as well. Nice, so, uh, very nice. He, he's coming out of retirement, so. Art Santori, was he the king of the cage fighter I'm thinking of? Uh, he, he was a king of the cage champion, I believe, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah he fought all, yeah, he, that yeah. That guy's an OG. Yeah, Pachuco, man, he used to call him a Pachuco. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, wow, man. Hey, give that guy a hello from us. Yeah, that's cool. That That's cool. He's making a comeback, huh? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's gonna make a full comeback, but he's for sure fighting. Got a little wild hair. Wants to get back in there. Um, he said he wants at least one or two more. So that's cool. Wow, man. that's good. Yeah, he said he's an OG. I remember watching him. I even went down to uh, Saboba. I watched him fight over there. And that guy's Saboba been, through, yeah, he's been yeah. through some wars. Yeah, he's one, he's one of the OGs of the yeah. back in the day. Yeah, he was. He's one of the guys. Did he, he trained at one time with Team Quest, I believe. Yep, he's been with yeah, Team Quest. He, he's been uh, all over. He's one of Dan Henderson's like main sparring partners. Exactly. Yeah, uh, exactly. But, so, what's your record right now, Cody? I'm four and nine right now. You're so. four and nine, all right. Yeah, I took a lot of unnecessary fights at a weight class that I shouldn't be, you know, fighting at, and uh, that's how we learn. Third fuck sick. I, I, I had, you know, a lot of bad fights, you know, and not really listening to anybody. And, you know, basically I was just fighting, fighting to survive, you know. Um, but, but now I, you know, I'm making my own money. I'm, you know, I got my own house and all this other stuff. So I'm fighting because I want to, not because I have to. So I just have like a, I feel 100% more confident. And I know I'm better than my record, but, uh, you know, I just, I just had a lot of I had a lot of bad fights, you know, under a lot of bad circumstances. So that's all right. That's how you get experience, bud. Now this fight's out of Tachi. This next fight? No, it's in Bakersfield. It's in Bakersfield. Yeah. In that new league, what is it called? No, it's called Mo, the Movida. It's a nightclub. Oh yeah. Right. At La Movida Nightclub uh, down here in Bakersfield, California. Uh, yeah, man, I'm, we're, we're pretty excited. It's a it's a really great venue. I uh, actually went down there last Thursday and checked it out. Um, it's really nice. Got a lot of room, you know. 
it's inside a nightclub, so that's going to be like one of those old John Claude Van Damme movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's more of like a, I don't know. It used to be like an auditorium thing, and then they turned into a nightclub. Big. And a restaurant. That's cool, man. How many I mean, people do you think could fit in there? Uh, they say the capacity is two thousand. Wow, uh, that's huge. Now, when is this? Know, when does this take place? For, that's for standing conference, though. You yeah. Know, I, I'm, I'm saying probably 1,300 feet. Yeah, that's still a lot. Wow, that's, that's pretty still good. A lot. Cody, yeah, when, I mean, when does this take place, Cody? Uh, June 15th. Uh, so that's next Friday, I believe. Yeah. So next Friday, guys, go out there and support your local fighter from Bakersfield. How's the ticket sale, Cody? Um, you still have tickets available if someone wants to get them, and how can they contact yeah. you? Yeah, I still have tickets. Uh, they're $40, uh, and you can contact me through my Facebook, which is Cody Sons, or my Instagram, Cody Sons MMA1. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really it, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, talking to me and taking the time to, to get a hold of me. Hey, we appreciate you calling in, bro, and you know what, man? I wish you the best of luck in your future. Don't worry about the past. That's not what you do in the past. It's what you do now, and it sounds like you got your head on straight and you're ready to go, bud. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Hope you guys can make it out to the fight. Yeah, yeah we definitely. plan on being there, Cody. God bless you, man. Stay yeah. focused, man, and, and just just keep doing work, brother. Yeah, can you give me a call or something like that. We can get a bite to catch away or something because you know I'll be hungry. Yeah. Right, yeah. brother. We'll talk to you after that fight. All right, bud. Thanks. All right. You guys have a great night. Thank, thank you, too, bud. bud. Bye. All right. So guys, right now too, we're also going to have Uni Valencia calling in from the Team KO we talked a little bit about earlier. Here in a couple of minutes here. So what do you think? Who else got the pro, the pro contract out there? How many did they give out? Um, I think there was just two of them, huh? Jose. Yeah, Jose Avalos, the, the bigger brother. Okay, Avalos. Yeah, and then Uni. Awesome. Now I wonder how they'll match these guys up when they get their first pro fight. I don't keep know, it man. Or are they gonna throw them to the wolves? I think they'll because they're coming in as prospects, so that's a good sign right there. They're gonna build them up. I hope they do. You I know? hope they, they build them up with some local fighters. Yeah, I um, had someone, you know, that I, I was taking care of, and then everything just went crazy. But uh, you know, it, Tachi is real generous if uh, they bring you in. And uh, destination is on the left. <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh you know they are very generous they bring you in they kind of invest because they're doing you know a little promotion marketing on you and stuff like that so it's good to uh you know take advantage of that opportunity man because there's not a lot of guys that come and and get that opportunity to fight there now Definitely. unless they're coming in as an opponent as an opponent exactly <laughs> now when you say as an opponent chris like i know what you're talking about what Break, break that down for people that don't understand. Like, there has to be an opponent sometimes. Yeah, and usually they have, like, you know, they call their fi fighters, as we've seen in the past, and uh, they'll bring somebody to, you know, with not... Maybe the experience is the same, but uh, the willing or the coordination ability might not be matched, but right. uh, they're the same, and... Uh, you know, kind of help build the record up a little bit and stuff like that until, you know, they get closer to the possibility of winning a belt or something like that kind of changes. And then sometimes the local guy gets a hiccup because they haven't had been pressured. You know, yeah, we've seen that too. A, sometimes a local guy comes, makes good on it. You know what I mean? I've seen a lot of yeah. times, you know, local guys go out there and beat top-notch guys out of Uriah Faber school. Uh, you know, you've seen it all. I've seen people come from all over the world out there at Tachi. And people are going to the UFC from there. So it, it's exciting for me to see these these local fighters, you know, have a chance to make it into that route. How many guys have we had locally make it into oh, the UFC? Oh, man, there's a lot of them. A lot of them. Um, I mean, we've had, well, God, where do you want to start? Diaz brothers. The <laughs> Diaz brothers, yeah. They were out here like a lot of people I don't mean, know. Swick, Lieben. Um, we saw so many people come through Tachi Palace. Uh, I, I, I'm i really thankful for those guys. You know, after the WEC left, okay, guys, we got Uni Valencia calling in here. Let's see if we can get this going. Uni, Uni Valencia, how you doing, bud? 
I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing great, man. You're here with me and Chris Ronquillo on the MMA Fight Pass podcast. And we're glad to have you, man. You couldn't make it into the studio tonight, but you called in and we're happy to have you. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> yes, sir. I was, uh, had to work 10 hour days, so. You're a grinder, man. What are you doing? What are you working? Uh, I'm working for Edison up in Shaver Lake. Good. That's good. So you guys just got yeah. out of the mountains, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We drive up there every day and um, got off a little late today, so that's why I can not be in there. It's all right, man. I understand. Um, first off, I want to congratulate you on your newborn child, bro. Your first Thank child, you. right? Yeah. Yeah. So how's it feel to be a dad? Uh, it's amazing. It's, um, I mean, I, you know, uh, I was told that it was, it was, you know, an amazing experience by a lot of people. But once I finally experienced it, it was, it's everything I've heard. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm really proud of you. I knew you were going to be a good father, just, just the way you hold yourself and everything. And, uh, Chris, you got, you got something you'd like to... Yeah, Yune, congratulations, man, from me, too, uh, on both. I mean, your, your baby Thank boy, you. man, and yeah, I know yeah. that your whole, it's a life-changing experience, man. It's not so much about me, me, me. <laughs> you got someone else oh, you got yeah, no, definitely. first. It's all, it's all about him, him, him. No. You, you got it, man. That, that, God bless you. Hey, another congratulations. You got in that pro contract. Everything changes now, man. You got a hell of a boot camp with the amateur career. You changing up a lot of things since there's going to be different elements of the fight game, you know, bringing it to you uh, now. You know, the elbows and knees and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, working on, um, you know, just expanding my, my game, um, you know, and, and incorporating the, the different things that I'm, you know, that I'm going to be exposed to at this level. Talk about your training out there at Team KO. Um, a lot of people don't know that much about Team KO, and uh, like I know you, you have the you could go and train anywhere you wanted. You you know you could go to any of the schools around here, but you're all, you guys have a loyalty with Danny and Johnny, and uh, t t tell us a little bit about your training out there at Team KO and what and what you like about it. Um, I mean, I think what I like best about it is. Um, I would say the main thing is <clears throat> everybody there is, is like family. I mean, the reason I started going there is because my my brother trained there, um, and everybody, you know, from from day one when I was there, <clears throat> it, it it's a family. Everybody there. I mean, uh, Tom, you, you yourself know. Um, you know, I consider you a brother because I met I appreciate you at that, KO. Man. Uh, I met you at KO, and so, like I said, uh, you know, we're, we're a smaller gym. We don't have a lot of, uh, you know, what the bigger gyms have. But, but I think what separates our fighters is we have uh, we have heart. Uh, all our fighters have heart, and then um, on top of that, we have uh, an immense amount of loyalty for for you know Danny, Johnny, and and and, and our each other there. Yeah, Danny and Johnny, man, those I can't give enough props out to those guys. Like everybody, every other gym around here, you know, every every gym around here, the coaches are really good people. Like I, I'll never hate on anybody. I got a lot yeah, of respect definitely. for everybody. But Danny and Johnny, they don't ask anything in return. They just all they ask is when you go into that gym is that you train hard and you put it all out there. And you yeah, guys, definitely. yeah, you guys that, do. That, that, that's like the uns, unspoken rule, basically, is. Uh, you know, there, there's nobody's gonna tell you anything, but you go in there and, and you know that you're gonna go in there and work. Now you got one thing I noticed out there is it's a small group of guys, but you guys have have a couple training tools. One of those training tools is a is a young man, or he's not a young man, but his name is Juan Pato Jimenez, and uh, he's yeah. a wrestling coach out there at Team KO. He's one of the coaches for the KO uh, kids wrestling team. Juan also fought in professional MMA, and and man, Juan is another guy. He go he goes out there and he goes in there, and he's not getting paid anything. And he'll spar with these guys. And I watch these guys when they spar. It's not easy sparring. Like you guys are going at it. You're, you're really fighting. And and yeah, Juan, I mean, if you I mean, like, you're fighting a guy like Juan, you he's gonna really benefit you. 
Yeah, there, that's why. I mean, Saturdays. I mean, if, if you're a, if you're a beginner, Saturdays is probably not the day to. Saturdays to go, not the I day mean. to go unless you want to get a little a real taste of it. <laughs> yeah, because you're gonna get guys that are the, that are hungry. Guys that are they they're hungry, so they're coming in here and and really the goal is just to make each other better. It's not nobody's trying to hurt each other, but. I mean, we all know what, you know, we train with each other enough to know what, what each, as, you know, how hard we can go on each other. And yeah, and it's a hard, can, it's a hard pace, but you guys aren't trying to hurt each other. Like I can, yeah, no, no, not at all. I mean, but you guys you know, are pushing they, each other. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Uh, to, oh, yeah, you got they, some other teammates out there too. I just would like to, uh, I'd like to give a couple, some props to some of our students out there at Team KO. Um, like I, I help out there a little bit. I haven't helped as much as I would like, but these guys, when I go out there, like they're super respectful to me, and they, the things I show them, they pick up. And like, uh, like Jesus Diaz, I know he's one of your training partners. Martin Gomez, yeah. Anthony yeah, Torres, boy. um, you got Anthony That's Torres, and your brother Alex Valencia. Hey, uh, talk about training with your brother a little bit. Uh, I mean, like I said, that the, the reason, the reason that I even. You know, got into this was because my brother was doing it. So, um, you know, and then I mean, I credit most of my my success. Well, I credit to the fact that you know I learned from my brother. I learned from my brother, and I learned from other of the you know top guys in there. You know, you're talking about you know Edgar Loza. Edgar uh, Loza is another one, man. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis. Um, Jeffrey Lewis, a beast. So, I mean, when I went in there, I mean, my first couple of weeks was rough. I mean, I, I felt like I was getting tossed around, beat up, but... Getting ragged that That's how you, that's when you realize if this is really what you want to do or or it's not. And, and if you have the heart for it or you don't. And like I said, I mean, all, all, the, all those guys that you mentioned and you know, my brother and, and everybody else, that's... Like I said, I, I mean, you, I don't think anybody reaches uh, any goals by themselves. You know, we all have help along the way. And um, like I said, my, you know, any success I've had is really a credit to everybody else that I, I train with. Um, I mentioned everybody that coaches me. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Hey, um, I was going to ask you something. Like, are you... Do you have any sponsors right now or what? We're, you know, with this podcast, you know, one of our goals with this podcast is we want to spotlight local fighters, but hey guys, like there's good people, there's good fighters out there that, that can use sponsorship. And Especially you might, he's turning pro. I know yeah. there's a big cost right there just for your license. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to cost money. Yeah, <clears throat> Licensing fees and all that is a lot more expensive for professional, you know, so I mean, I have... Uh, mainly right now, my main sponsor is uh, AJ Electric, who's been he's been my main sponsor from day one. So I mean, AJ um, Electric, <clears throat> shout out to you, AJ, my friend. AJ Electric, that's somebody that I would, I would definitely want to shout out uh, because, like I said, from day one, when when you know I told him that I was thinking about doing this, he's, he got on board, you know, and and you know whether. I won a fight, or whether I lost a fight, um, it, I always had support from him. So um, he's my main one right now. But you know, now, um, like you guys are saying, you know, it's, it's more expensive to to once you step up to the to professional ranks. So I am looking for for more sponsors, and um, I, you know, I, I'm somewhat selective in in the sponsors I take because uh, just. Just uh, the way that I am, the way that uh, I dedicate myself to this, uh, I really, I want sponsors that are, uh, you know, basically, you know, dedicated as well, that are... Uh, that are going to get behind you. Exactly. You know, like, I, I go in the cage and I'm going to give 110%. And, um, I, you know, all I, all I really expect is the same in return. Um you know, and, and just, you know, companies or people that uh, are out there doing good things for, for, for the community and all that. Uh, that. Those are the kind of things that I, I look at. That's great, man. Now, guys, if you haven't seen uh, Uni Bomber, Uni Valencia in the cage fighting, you like to scrap it up when you're out there. You like to stand up and bang. But 
in one of your recent fights, I seen you pull off a pretty slick armbar. Yeah. What was that all about, man? Um, well, you know, I like I was saying earlier, uh, I think about uh, most of the guys that train at KO were we're scrappers. We we like to we like to stand up and fight, but I mean. Well, I, well, that's my favorite. I like to stand up and fight, but I feel I have a pretty good ground game um, if the fight goes there. My preference is to keep it stand up and give give the fans a show, you know? Like, they they want to see some action, so... I'm, yeah, I'm that's definitely... Here. It is. It's yeah. entertainment. It's entertainment, man. I, I enjoy it for sure. I enjoy it for yeah, sure. But, exactly. man, I just... So, you know, I'm really I'll proud of much, you, bro. Yeah. Appreciate like, it. Yeah, when I seen you... Uh, Pull that armbar off, man. I can't tell you how proud I was to see that, man. It was just, it was really uh, something because I know you'd like to scrap it up on the feet. And uh, a lot of guys don't want to go into that deep water. You know, they might slug it out for a little bit, but you look pretty relaxed out there. Did, did you and your brother do a lot of fighting when you were younger? Maybe a few street uh, fights here and there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, or maybe I, some brotherly I mean, love, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. I uh, mean, him. He, my brother is younger than me, so I mean, growing up, um, I think we, there was uh, such a big gap to where you know we we weren't that that close in age. So I always took on a more of a, a you know I wasn't like trying to beat up my little brother. I was always like looking out for him. You know, I um, always thought he was the older one for some reason, but you're the you're the older brother. Yeah, yeah. So I always you know kind of kept an eye out for him sort of thing you know like i always you know i always felt like he's had been able to hold his own so i i, I would just you know if ever <laughs> he there can was definitely a time where I, and I, if there were ever there was a time where i felt i needed to step in i i would do that but um besides me and him i mean the only time is when we're sparring and you know sometimes we're at the gym and me and him are sparring and people will you know, the whole gym will stop what they're doing, and then they'll just watch us, and then they'll ask, afterwards they'll ask us if we what's going on, if we like each other. You know? <laughs> that's what but I that's thought how, the first the first day I went how, in there. Yeah, but that's how hard we 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 go. I mean, I I know, you know, I know the caliber of fighter that he is, and so I know I pretty much know how hard I can go, and um, and he's my brother. You know, I don't you know. I don't mean it in a bad way, but I don't feel bad if I hit him. And I'm no, sure man. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. feel bad if he hits me. I grew up with two brothers, and it's just brotherly love. Um, yeah, guys, we're, we're gonna, Uni, we want to keep you on the line. Stay on the line. We're going to take okay. a break. Guys, I just want to give a quick shout-out to Spike and Rel. Hey, if you want to try a good tri-tip sandwich or a ribeye plate, I'm talking good. Not your average, everyday barbecue. Right now they got a tri-tip special. What is it? Nine ninety-nine for yeah, a tri-tip sandwich and a and a basket of fries, guys. Come on, doesn't get any better than that. Uh, Spike and Rel, we really appreciate the sponsorship and Glepler Communications. Glepler Thank you, guys. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Hammerfist Podcast here on MMA Fight Pass. Well, Uni, you want to shout out to the people that have helped you out, my friend, and then a good contact if someone is interested out there and in getting their name on you. Um, well, see, like I, you know, I was saying earlier, I love, shout out definitely to everybody at Team KO, uh, everybody that you know I've trained with, uh, all my coaches. Um, you know, I was, there's so many that it's kind of hard to name every single person. But like I said, every everybody there is, is played, it has helped me out, uh, whether they're a coach or whether they just go train there here and there. Like, everybody's helped me out. Um, so definitely shout out to everybody there. Um, you know, definitely, uh, you know, shout out to uh, my fiance. uh 
for putting up for with everything she has to put up when you know I have fights going on, which is you know me training and spending less time at home, uh, and you know with the weight cuts and all that. So uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Um, we had you know we had Chris Honeycutt in the studio last week, and we you know I, I always ask fighters this question, and the question is you know how how does your spouse you know, how do they take it with the, with the training and you, you know, to be a fighter, you have to leave the house a lot. You know, it's not, you, you, yeah. you have to, and you, you know, you just had a newborn and you have your fiance and I've noticed she is, she's right there behind you, man. She's got your back. I can tell she has your back and I know they go to your fights and they attend your fights and everything. And man, it is not easy being a woman and having a fighter for a husband. Like I know it's not easy. And man, I, I, I give your wife a lot of props. Like I've, I've seen it go wrong so many times. I've I've been backstage with fighters and they've had their girlfriends back there and been and fighting with each other and I, I I've seen it all man like I cornered a guy one time from, from our gym from KO out there and uh, and the first thing I see when I get back there is his girlfriend was backstage with him and and then like right before the fight like they were fighting and arguing and needless to say the fight didn't go good but when I see you like with your family and uh, you know your lady likes to come in and watch you train and everything it just it, it seems like she's really got your back. And, and man, that's a beautiful thing. And uh, I see how happy you guys are together with your new baby and everything. And, and man, dude, it, it's great. I, I really want to congratulate you again on that. And what do you, what's the future, man? What do you see happening with this, with this fighting out there in Tachi Palace? You know, it's a, this is a big deal, man. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like, um, you know, uh, my, my, ever since I started doing I have come. We, we, we really good and be on a run and they let their ego get the best of them and when they get out there into that pro show they think it's going to be the same and then the tables get turned and, and you know it's frustrating but you've been watching this game like you you've watched your teammates go through it wins and losses yeah. and, and and it looks like you're on the right track man I, I really hope that you put it down yeah. you know step your training up bring in people you know, guys, Team KO is is a place that anybody can come train. And you know, a lot of guys come from other teams and train there just to yes. get the work in. Yeah, we you got, know they're going to get a good training there. Yeah, you're going to get a good training if you want to come in and just like get some sparring with some cool guys, like get a good workout. Sat what is it? Saturdays are sparring day. Yeah, Saturdays are, are sparring day. And go in there, and the thing is with Team KO, like you go in there and you leave your ego at the door, That's and it. you're going to get a good workout. And man, don't believe the hype. Like, don't judge people from what other people say. Like, you, you got to go and meet somebody and train with them yourself to get to know. And uh, like, I've rolled with, with Uni and his brother Alex. And man, like, these guys come at me. Like, I, I've been training for a long time and uh, I was impressed when I first went into the gym because they don't have a, a jiu-jitsu instructor there all the time. But man, these guys grapple. And if you don't know Farmersville's wrestling history, it's it goes pretty deep. Like, farm. They got some really good wrestlers in there. Uh, you guys got David Marisco, right? He's back in there training again. Yeah, he's um, he's he had been working a lot, but he's he's coming back. You know about David? Yeah, David's good, and actually, uh, his kind of uh, Mo, uh, Mo's uh, husband Mondo goes in there and trains too. Yeah, Mondo uh, Diaz. He's one of, he was one of the and top. Jeffrey Lewis. They're yeah, all yeah, related. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They're all yeah. That's true. It's a family affair. What other days are uh, 
say a guy uni wants to come down to team ko it's you know we got a lot of guys listening in. I'm, i've always got young guys asking me where to train and i i send people everywhere but depending on where they live you know what i mean and what kind of type of yeah. person i i you know the shoe fits different for everybody what what is a good day for just a, for a youngster to come in there if they want to get a little look at what's going on um i mean really any day any day after uh you know three four o'clock uh you're gonna you're gonna show up and there's gonna be people there that you know are at every level there's gonna be people that are just starting out there's gonna be people that are advanced um but i think what separates us is um you're gonna get the same treatment from the for that person that's just beginning he's gonna treat you the same way as that person that is a lot more advanced uh we don't think we're any better than than you know I don't feel I'm any better than the guy that's just starting out, even though I'm, you know, seven and three, and uh, I've, uh, you know, I've a belt or whatever. Like, I it's just, it's just me. I'm still, you know, I, I, I feel that uh, we're a humbled bunch, and you know, when you like I said, you're gonna get the same treatment from whoever, whoever it is that's there is gonna treat you the same way. And the treatment is this, you, you can punch me in the face and I can punch you in the face and after we will shake hands and, uh, and there's some really awesome taco trucks like right around Team KO, that's one of the other things I really like about Farmersville, like uh, you get through training there and you can go get some really good food, but the guys, I, I, I'm serious man, like I got, a, you know, I got a hankering for some good tacos and these guys always bring me to a different little spot over there, but uh, nah man, like I, I, I really appreciate you guys man, like you, you guys welcome me in there. And I see how you guys welcome everybody in there. And like Jesus Garcia, you know, we were just talking earlier today. And I, I know you train with him quite a bit. He's one of our blue belts. And uh, he, yeah. he loves you guys, man. He can train anywhere. You know, he could go to any of these schools. And uh, he likes the flow down there, though. You know what I mean? He, li he likes the vibe. And I hope you guys keep that up. And, man, you know, I, I just wish you the best in your future, bro. I appreciate it. Like I said, I mean... I mean, you know, you're basically family. Like I said, everybody that, that goes through that gym that, you know, spends a, a, a few, you know, training sessions there. Part of the um, team. Yep. Where were you? No? Yeah, it is a family, man. It's a family. That's what I like about it. You know, I can train anywhere. I, I'm friends with all the instructors and like I could literally go and train with anywhere. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. You guys were you guys remind me a lot of the guys like I grew up with and stuff. You know what I mean. And, and your little gym is very similar to, to the box when I first opened up in my garage. And you know what? Uh, a lot of people don't realize that Team Ko has a record. I think it, what is this, the second quickest knockout in MMA history by dude, Steve Ramirez. Steve Ramirez. Is, so uh, that's one, something to say. Right yeah, Steve there. Ramirez. Um, a shout out to Steve Ramirez. He was actually one of the first guys that got Team Ko going. I don't know if you were out there when Steve was there, and yeah, he has what is it, the second fastest I think knockout it's fastest, in yeah. MMA history. When he did it, it was the first fastest knockout. Yeah, but yeah, he's another yeah, one, man. Like, I, I wasn't out there yet, you know, but uh, I have seen the video, and Steve's one of, you know, he's another one that's like I said, is like family because I've met him. You know, several times uh, from all the different MMA events. So. Yeah, and, and man, Steve Ramirez, I've trained with him. He helped me get ready when I was getting ready um, yeah. for the Ultimate Fighter tryout. Uh, Steve Ramirez's style of training is really one of the reasons why you guys have that style at that gym. If, if you ever train with Steve Ramirez, he's coming at you. And, uh -huh. uh, and then he'll shake your hand afterwards. You know what I mean? But you're, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, he's the, he was the real deal. And, uh, but anyhow, man, I want to I, I want to say thanks to Danny and Johnny and all you guys out there, Martin Gomez, um, Edgar Loza, all, all the guys I've met out there. You know, it's it's been great. Chris Penn, he's a, he's another one, man. He's another Team KO guy. That yeah. is, uh, he's a loyal guy. You know what I mean? And you and your brother, man. I, I hope to see your brother fight again too. What's his plans, dude? Um, he's uh, pretty sure he wants to fight again soon. I hope he um, does. Yeah. How old is he now? Shoot. 26, I believe. Don't feel bad. I, I don't think I could tell you my brother's <laughs> ages either, dude. <laughs> I barely remember my age sometimes, man. <laughs> exactly. I, think I, I think I took some hits in the head somewhere along the way. <laughs> 
yeah, so man no, what else do we got bud that's it man hey appreciate the time buddy get home safe and uh, as as the fight gets closer because it's not until november we're going to have you back on and see how your progress is going and get an update on the opponent and everything sounds good thank you guys all right uni a you have a good night man take care of that baby bro thank you i will all right bro best of wishes to uh, you have a good one all right you guys have a good one there it was, guys. Uni Valencia. The Unibomber. He's a good kid, man. All of those guys over there, they're very respectful. I know throughout the community, they've always got a, a lot of a negative feedback, but no one that's ever been there can say that same thing. That's right. And then usually the same people that state that end up end up training. Them. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> man, I'll be honest. Like uh, Even to this day, I've, I've been trained in martial arts since I was a kid and in jiu-jitsu for like 20 years. And... I'm still intimidated when I go to any gym. Like, it's weird. I, I mean, I'm still intimidated to go into any gym and train with people. And when I first went to KO and, and walked in there, and man, like you do, you see a bunch of dudes with tattoos and and, and uh, what you would call wife beaters. And you know, you know yeah. what I mean? But they're really a good group and uh, they do a lot for the community. I don't see a lot of other coaches doing that. Like these guys do toy drives, jacket drives. They're always doing something for the community. They got KO kids. If, if you got a kid out there and you know it's summertime right now and you know kids are all on video games all day long and on these ipads and you know all i see is people with their head in this get your kid off the couch you want to get your kid off the couch and get him involved in something and, and man there's no there's nothing better to get your kid involved in martial than martial arts and really they're the team ko is supported by their own wallet so if yeah. you're a business in town and want to write off do a donation out there man everything goes for equipment and yeah, it's uh, a write-off, and yeah. man, you're doing a good thing because these guys are just out. Like I said, they're they're not charging people. Like people do pay. Don't don't get me wrong. People go in there and pay a monthly fee if they can afford it. But yeah. you'll never see John, Johnny or Danny come up and ask you for money. And they know if you know, hey, this guy can't afford the train. I'm still going to put my time into him. And like they will put their time into you. You know that that's the bottom line. So that's what I like about those guys. And uh, I was, I'm glad we were able to spotlight them tonight. And uh, if you guys are out there, you know, and you got a gym and you got fighters, we're, you know, this podcast, we're looking to, you know, we want to spotlight you local fighters. That's what this is about. We don't want to be just any regular MMA podcast just talking about the UFC and Bellator or whatever. We're here for the local fighters. We got this 559 fights. We got these new organizations coming up. And man, uh, get in touch with us, guys. How can they, how can people get in touch with us if they want to uh, get on the show? You can go in there on the MMA Fight Pass uh, message. Uh, our producer Archie Tovar or me Chris Ronquillo uh, I'm on Facebook or Twitter you can also uh, get a hold of me on, on Twitter Tom and, uh, Holland's Facebook it's pretty we'll work, simple we'll work on, on your schedule and schedule in and uh, you can come in house here in live studio or, or give us a call man and that that's the main thing we want everybody to know what's going on in the community oh yeah yes. next week the next king week guys we have the king we have a we have a real OG coming into the studio, Art Encinia. Art Chenega. In Chenega. Yeah. Sorry, I just sliced right. and diced your last <laughs> name up. Hey, Art is an OG, and I remember fighting back in the day with Art out there at Tachi Palace, and uh, so he's making a comeback. Is that the deal? Um, what, he's, what's the deal he's with Art? Fought, yeah, he's fought recently, and and um, that's the plan. He's going to do some more fights until he feels that you know he don't want to do it as long now, as he's available. He's coming into the and, studio. And, and he feel, uh, is he coming in house? Yeah, he's gonna be in the studio. Guys, don't miss that. And he's uh, a, he's a good he he's a good guest, man. This guy will tell you all kinds of stories. It, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, and this guy he's he's another one that is very exciting to watch. Like he's not he's no stranger to getting in there and scrapping it up. He's not gonna go in there and hug the guy or anything like that. Arts always went in there and put it on the line. He was a champ out there, wasn't he? Yes, he was. At what a weight was he the A couple of origins. I think it was forty five. Yeah, 145. He he was a champ out there at Tachi when there were some animals in there. So and uh, yeah, he's another local that. I think it was yeah Tachi. I think it was under uh, was it PFC or something like that. Was it PFC that PFC, he had a belt? The PFC and then also I think on uh, uh, another organization. I think with uh, Al Joss and Pure Combat or something. Yeah, he's I no stra he's like no that. stranger to mixing it up inside the cage. And guys, man, you can watch us. We're live. You can even come down and join the live studio audience. And guys, I'm serious. We got Father's Day coming up. Don't make your dad get out in the backyard and barbecue. <laughs> Bring, Bring him over here. There you go. Check it out. 
a 12 ounce ribeye. Just imagine this, a 12 ounce ribeye with au jus sauce, with a side of garlic mashed potatoes. Hey, your dad's worth it, man. Bring Let it down here. That MMA Fight Pass sent you. And exactly. If you go, hey, and these people are real friendly here. Like, they're super friendly people. You know, we already did a little eating here and did a little taste testing. But, uh, hey, you don't want to eat, you can go to the bar and, you know, you good. They got a tip. Nine ninety nine. Nervous, 